Okay, Stephanie, uh, you talked about your kids a lot on the show, and I'm just dying to know what was their reaction to seeing their mom play Survivor? I mean, their reaction initially, it's just been complete excitement. You know, every week we've been watching the show together for, you know, almost three years now. And so every Wednesday night is a tradition. We have a pizza. We watch Survivor. So watching it with them when I was on has been absolutely amazing. And it's been so fun to answer their, their questions and everything. Obviously, last night had a completely different tone. And, you know, the end of the episode, I had very heartbroken, angry children. Um, but prior to last night, it's been such a wonderful experience to share with them. Hmm. And you said that playing Survivor has been a dream of yours for like 17 years now. Um, can you tell us a bit about your journey? What was your journey like getting onto the show? I mean, I started watching season one and was absolutely hooked. Like the adventure of it, the idea of meeting new people. I mean, this was clear back before even MySpace. I mean, this was tree hmm. phones, all of this. So this just saw the opportunity to go live on an island with a bunch of random people and have this adventure with them was something that I knew that one day I was going to do. I knew it 17 years ago. And I applied, and I applied. I sent in VHS tapes. I opened casting calls. I applied online. I did everything I could. Um, just never for Jack, so I just kept on applying and kept living my life. And, you know, it's weird. Everything happened at the right time, and I definitely feel like right now was my time. I have more life experience. I have more maturity. And it just was, I, I wasn't, I'm not, obviously, I'm not the same person I was 17 years ago, but I have a lot more going for me now than I did then. And so it was just, it was the right time right now. The stars aligned. Hmm. So let's talk about tribal council. It was actually a unanimous vote. So Michael and Jenna both voted for you as well. So were they clued into the fact that you were going home or were they just, just guessing that it would be you? I believe that they were clued in. I was going home, um, being away from my tribe for that 24 hours, and having, for me, the, my social game being my strongest suit, it was really devastating. Like, I, I was away from the bonding that was happening. It would be so easy for Michael and Jenna just to throw my name under the bus, say, we'll do whatever you want, just don't vote us out. And then I also came back without an advantage. So... I came back and I, I knew immediately that the whole tribe dynamic had changed and that they weren't willing to try to pull something big off because they were more concerned with their own safety. And I was just an easy target because I was gone. I had no way to defend myself or to, to strategize. I mean, I had literally the time between the immunity challenge and tribal council, and they had almost two solid days. Hmm. Well, what's your reaction to seeing Desiree looking through your your bag to see if you had uh, an advantage? You know, it's something that it definitely it happens on Survivor. Like people search through people's bags a, a kind of all the time. Like you can't take anything, but it was very um, it wasn't it wasn't that shocking because it just it happens all the time. It happens definitely way more than is shown. Hmm. Knowing that you were outnumbered, if you had the option of playing the game at Ghost Island, you probably would have played the game, right? Oh, hell yes. Yes, I was expecting to play the game. Because right. from my vantage point, there wasn't an option. I had only seen Jacob and Kellen, who had a chance. Jacob did, Kellen didn't. But I didn't know that Jonathan and Chris both thought there's no game for you because they're on a separate track. So I never talked to them about their Ghost Island experience. Hmm. Um, I think I think as an audience member, we want to see you guys play the game. I think I personally I was a little disappointed that Kellen didn't play the game. But if she had, and let's say she lost and she lost her vote, it would have been tied last week. So, you know, who knows what would have happened? Exactly. You know, that it was. Ghost Island ended up being not the greatest thing for me because, number one, you know, when we needed Kellen to be immune and not be there, all of a sudden, like, Ghost Island doesn't provide immunity anymore. And had Kellen been immune, it would have been a 4-4 vote, and it would have either we would have got the idol right 
we or we would have gone to Raw. Like without Kella there, it would have been a different story. And you know, obviously she didn't play because she knew that she was very confident in her numbers. And I mean, I I was upsetting to me because of course I would have played. I would have done anything, but I was also in a completely different position than Kellen. She was in a complete power position. Um, but Kellen just being at Ghost Island and all of a sudden not being immune threw a huge huge wrench in our plan. It was it was quite devastating to the to the Malolo mm-hmm. Four. Uh, so let's talk about the numbers. After the tribe swap, your team was just simply outnumbered, and you guys tried everything you could. Michael tried his idol, um, and nothing could break that bond of five. So I guess my question is, is Survivor as much of a, a luck game as it is a strategic game? Absolutely. I think that you can't, like, diminish the fact that it's a social, strategic, and a strength game, but at the same time, there's a massive amount of luck needed to win this game. Like, you need to be on the right tribe, have the right numbers, the right alliance, you know. Like I said, we we lost everything pretty much at Malolo. Kellen all of a sudden isn't immune. I draw white rock. I can't play a game. Like, I get back, and, you know, we lose immunity again. And so, it's you know, there is a lot of a lot of luck involved in this game. And unfortunately, like, I didn't get a shred of luck. Like, I... I just didn't, and and I needed a little luck because I do believe I had what it takes. It's just I didn't have luck on my side, and if you don't have luck on your side in this game, you're you're sitting at home with you know me and the rest of this kick ass free jury that you know really wanted to play the game. I'm really curious to see what's going to happen next week. Apparently, there's going to be a second tribe swap. So, what will this mean to the, the five? Are they going to be split up? Is Bradley going to be outnumbered all of a sudden? Is Bradley going to be voted out? Uh, I can't wait to see what's going to happen. Are you are you excited to see what what the show will entail now that you're not on it, or are you kind of dreading like seeing the next few episodes, knowing that you could have been there? I think that certain aspects are going to be hard for me to see. I mean, if I if I had made it one more night, it's like where would I have ended up on the swap? Would I have had the numbers, and then my luck would have turned around? Um, being a huge fan of the show, I think that missing out on the experiences of the merge and the loved ones visit and then, you know, the the crazy reward challenge, you know, winning things that, you know, they always have after the merge, it just, I'll never get to experience that. And that, that's hard as a super fan to be, you know, to give up that and to think that I don't have that experience and that might like hurt my heart a little, but I'm really excited for the season. I think that there's a lot of great players left in the game. And, you know, I'm rooting for one of the Malolo four over on the Navidi tribe to, to pull it off. If you were on the jury, who who would you vote for? Let's say that the jury vote was tomorrow and there's still 15 people left in the game. Um, I would vote for... Libby or Donathan, um, I would probably vote for Donathan. I love Donathan. <laughs> I hope he makes it very I fun. Do too. So interesting. Fun I to do watch. too. Um, okay, one last question from one super fan to another. Who's your favorite winner of all time? I mean, I, I know that it's so cliche, but it's Parvati. Like, I just always love mm-hmm. her. I'm, you know, I love the meaning of her name. It's a very yoga name. It's always resonated with me. I've been a yogi for, you know, 19 years now. So I feel like I've always connected with her as a winner. So um, I don't even care if it sounds freaking cliche. Like, she's definitely always <laughs> been my favorite. And I don't, I don't think anybody will ever – Never talk that unless I do, of course. <laughs> <laughs> I love Richard Hatch. He, he was—he just invented, you know, so many aspects of the game that are still there today. And I love Queen Candy yes. as well. Yes. Well, Stephanie, it was great to talk to you today. I hope you have a good rest of your day. All right. Thank you so much. I appreciate it.